All right, take it away. We can see your screen and I already started recording. Okay, perfect. Thanks everybody um, for joining us tonight. Um, sorry about a little bit of a hiccup going on, but we're here, we're ready to get started and thanks so much for tuning in. And if you're listening to the recording, thanks for tuning in as well. So um, I'm Nicole Lefebvre. I've been with Charlie Vineyard for about three and a half years now. And I know the majority of you guys out there and um, I wanted to share some valuable information that I've learned over the years and actually some of it came from um, a series of trainings I've recently attended. So um, tonight we're going to talk a little bit about coaching from the middle and what that means. So everybody says they would love a successful team, but what's the secret? I've attended many different online webinars, um, seminars, traveling vineyard events, and non-traveling vineyard events, and I've heard many different philosophies. And what I have done for you guys tonight is I have taken what I actually use for my team and I'll be sharing with you guys, but it's it's a, like a morph of, of a bunch of different strategies. So I hope you guys can take some notes, figure some stuff out, and let me know what you think, and feel free to message me at any, any time. So coaching a successful team does not mean only coaching those that achieve. It means motivating and encouraging um, giving motivation and encouragement to those who need it. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Now, I'm currently standing at director status, but I'm very happy to say that um, I have a small but mighty team. I currently have about 55 active wine guides. We all know we have more on our roster than that, but many of our wine guides are not active. But out of those 55 active wine guides, about a third of my team have a ranking of one star or above, which is pretty awesome to think that one third of my team has added somebody to their team. So I want to share with you guys tonight some of those techniques where I'm getting people to do that, where I'm getting a very wide girth of momentum on my team. Because I don't believe in just building up, stacking as high as I can. I believe in building a team that duplicates itself, that replicates itself, and grows outward. So tonight we're going to talk about finding your middle. middle. During the presentation, I'm going to break it down, your team, into three different categories. And I'm going to teach you how to lead and motivate each group and teach you strategies that really work and really work well. Now, I want you guys to keep an open mind tonight. There might be some things in here that you've already learned, but you need to stop and think to yourself, am I really following through with these techniques? Can I really say I'm efficiently using them? Am I using them in a routine way? So... You don't know what you don't know, so tune in tonight. I'm going to teach you how to identify your achievers, the middle, and the low achievers, and what you should be doing with them. First, the group we're going to talk about is the achievers. These are the people, the team members on your team, that most often share organizational values with you, where they line up with the company's values, where they want to be part of the growing company, they follow rules, um, they attend events, They're, they share the same values. They're proactive and not reactive. This means when dealing with situations, they tend to think ahead and try to avoid situations. They're trying to figure out how they can make the situation so they don't happen, um, rather than reactive, rather than reacting to the situation after it already happens. Um, they suggest changes for process of improvement where they're, they're giving feedback to either the company, their team members, or their uplines, and they're all looking for that kind of um, change to come through. Um, I know my upline is Heather Kess. I'm constantly bouncing ideas off of her, or I say, you know, have you guys talked about this on the Ruby page? Um, you know, and she's really good about bringing my ideas forward or even saying, you know what, why don't you shoot Rick or support an email with this idea? It's such a great idea. Um, they're also open to new ideas, um, especially when it's company policy. I know we just all went through a big company policy on um, ranking and soliciting. So, you know, those people that are always on board with the new ideas or the new policies or anything that you throw at them, they can be considered the group of the achievers. Um, another great trait this group will have is they're often great mentors for newbies. I will often, when I'm team building, um, have them friend. I'll give them a suggestion of people to friend on Facebook. If you go on Facebook and you click on somebody's page, 
you can actually scroll down to their friend category and make suggestions for them. So when I have somebody new join my team, I often do that and I tell them, hey, I just suggested that you follow Gina, of, Gina um, Divine. I just suggested you follow, follow Lisa Brinker. You know, I often do things like that to set them up with a connection or peop, even people on my team, I'll say, you know what, you remind me a lot like this girl that um, I have on my team named Nicole Griffey who was in the military and you're in the military too. I think you guys should really connect. That's another great way. Um, this group often motivates others. Um, and they're consistently achieving um, the top, quote unquote, 10 on your team. You know, whatever your top 10 it is, you know, it may not be the 10 exactly, but they're always in that top category for you. Um, you will naturally be in touch with these team members, whether they are reaching out to you or you're reaching out to them. Um, it just naturally happens. It's something that they've come to, and it's definitely a trait that the achievers will have. So if you guys have to take a screenshot, go ahead, take a screenshot of this, but we'll also have the replay available for this. So that's your achievers. After you guys get done with this presentation, you might want to pull up your team list and actually break people down into the groups that we talk about tonight, and that might actually help you identify how to coach these people on your team. Okay, what achievers need? Achievers are naturally go-getters. They look for you for examples, models, insights, and advice on higher level topics and situations. This group should only be taking about 25% of your attention. This group will need from you, um, for you to ask them what their goals are. It's important that you find out what the top achievers on your team, what their goals are. You know, be involved with that. Let them know that you value what they're working towards as well. You'll need to ask them to participate in creating your team goals. If there are a huge chunk of your team, you know, that achiever part, those people, are need, you need them to get to your next goal, you should absolutely be asking them to help create your goals. Um, part of that teamwork in involving them will make them want to help you achieve your goals because they realize that they're part of that domino effect in reaching that goal. So you should always be um, asking them to participate in that part. Be thanking them for their hard work. I know this sounds super simple, but I've heard so many people in the past say, my leader never tells me thank you. People just assume that you, they know that you're thankful. Say it. People need to hear it, no matter if it's once or twice, or they even if they tell you they don't need the um, credit, still make sure you give credit when needed. Um, outline why they are so important to contributing to the team. Let them know, um, hey, you know, your team sales, your small team, takes up 10% of my team sales. Thank you so much. That 10% really contributes a lot. Whatever it is, whatever you break down your numbers, let them know why and how they contribute to the team. People need to know this, and it makes them feel important, and it also motivates the majority of your leaders. They are motivating, motivated through achievement. Um, ask if there's anything you can do for them. You would be surprised um, what you learn from your leaders when you ask them. Sometimes they'll say, I can't think of anything right now, or you're fantastic. But once in a while, they will tell you. They'll tell you what they need. And it's important that you ask because not all of them will come forward and will tell you right away. Okay. Achiever habits. You should always be re-recruiting your top performers by letting them know you value them and that you want to help them achieve their goals too. It goes back to that previous screen. You should be asking them what their goals are. You should be helping them work on those goals whether they be team building goals, whether they're working on selling a certain amount of um, PD for the year, whether it's personal development, you know, you can always partake in their goals as well. Since this group is already driven, the majority of your focus should not be here. This is a big mistake of new leaders. They often make this mistake. Oftentimes they focus too much on this group, um, which can lead to demotivation, it can also lead to diva-like attitudes, um, a sense of entitlement, or even a dependence on your skills. 
These people are already the achievers for a reason. Make sure you're only spending that 25% of the time here. Just because they're your superstars does not necessarily mean they need all of your attention. There's actually a better way to focus your time and energy elsewhere. And we're going to talk about that coming up. The goal to coaching a healthy team is to create a team that duplicates itself and its successful models. Okay? Let that one sink in. You can build, you can be adding people to your team left and right. You can add 30 wine guides a year. But that comes down to nothing if they're not duplicating themselves. If they're not happy, if they're not using successful methods, it's not going to get you far at all. Okay. The team that gets you to your goals today will not be the team that gets you to your goals tomorrow. Now, all of us on this webinar are team leader or above. So think about it. Think about your team that got you to three star. Think about your team that got you to team leader. They're often two different groups of people. The team that's getting you to your next goal is always evolving and changing. And that's something I think we forget about. So I just love this quote. It's so true. The team that gets you to your goal today will not be the team that gets you to your goal tomorrow. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about identifying the low achievers. Um, these are people on your team that most often keep saying they're going to start. How many of us have people that say they're going to start? Or maybe they started and they did well for a while and they fizzled out. And then they keep saying, I'm going to start, I'm going to start, I'm going to start. Okay? Automatically put them into their low, low achiever category until they prove elsewise. Um, they have inconsistent amount of tastings. Maybe one month they have like six tastings, the next month they have zero. You know, how many people have seen that on their team where, you know, or maybe they'll do one or two tastings a month and then they won't have another tasting for three or four months. That's so frustrating. Um, they join for social reasons other than team building, sales, personal development, which is okay. Remember, we all have different goals. And if that's their goal is they just want to do this for something fun, that's totally okay, but you're not going to pour a ton of time into this person to try to change their aspect on the business. You're never going to change somebody's why. You can only make their path better. So make that your goal. Don't change their goal or their end game. Just make their path to their goal pleasant. Okay. Often, this group can also react to situations instead of being proactive. How many people have you ever seen on the Facebook page when the first thing goes wrong, they post it on your group page and they complain? You know, but they don't take a step to be proactive about it. You know, there's certain things like host coaching that we can be proactive about. There are certain things if we do our training, our training teaches us how to be proactive. And you can also use your upline to be proactive about situations. A lot of people wait for the situation to happen that are in this category and then react to it. Um, they do not participate or very minimal on team pages and our trainings and contribute negatively sometimes if they do. I know right now some of you guys can pick some of these team members right out of this bunch, okay, right away. These are people that we should not be messaging all the time and trying to get them to see the light and why they should get on team tastings, why, why team calls. You know, um, these people, are you going to put them right into your low achieving category? They often have a negative mindset or they have a mindset where things are never their fault. I went to this tasting and I didn't get any orders. This is the third tasting. I got less than 150. I didn't get my tasting set back. Oh, nobody there liked wine. You know, Think about some of these things. That's another red flag that this person is a low achiever. You might think this person has everything they need to be successful, but they're not getting the results. Oftentimes, we blame ourselves when it's really it's something that they are, they're not doing. Okay, this group, don't, don't laugh too hard, but I often call them assholes or time suckers because they will ask you a ton of questions and advice, and they either A, do not listen, or they don't apply it. They would rather you tell them 
where the answer, how the answer is, then look for the answer themselves. How many of you guys, especially with newbies that get into this business, you ever have somebody ask you a ton of different questions, they're constantly messaging you, you wake up in the morning, you have six messages from them, you're messaging them all day long, like, or they're posting on Facebook, your Facebook team page, and a ton of different questions, and they just seem to be asking a million questions where they can find the answers to themselves. How frustrating is that? Those are your assholes. We've all had one or two on our team. We've all seen it. I'm going to tell you guys how to deal with assholes. Um, often this group will often say, I'm trying and provide you with, or provide you with excuses. Okay? New leaders often become stuck on helping this group. Why? Because you want them to succeed and often take it personally if they do not. You want success for them more than they want success for themselves. This is always the first thing I tell my team members that get LEAD certified. Okay? You cannot take it personally when you sign somebody up and they don't launch or they don't do well. Okay? They have to want the success more than you want it for themselves. And we often have a hard time understanding this concept because we as leaders, when we joined the business, we came right out of the starting blocks, working it hard, doing everything we could to be successful and overcoming hardships. We often forget or don't know what it's like for people that don't want it as much as we did. Also, this group of people has not yet realized the biggest thing holding them back is themselves. Let me read that again. This group has not yet realized the biggest thing holding them back is themselves. They will make excuses for everything. They'll say it's traveling vineyard. They'll say it's your upline. They'll say nobody likes wine in my area. A ton of different excuses, but it really boils down to this. They are, letting them, are holding themselves back. They are in their old way, their own way. So do not take this personally. It is not on you. Okay. Only 10% of your time should be spent with this group. Do you see that? 10%. This is possible if you have a duplicatable system set up and you've trained other team members on how to use this system that is efficient. I think I talked about that in the last slide. I'm going to teach you how to deal with ask holes and new team members as well that are motivated. Okay, what you do, you're going to use a tag and tell system. Now, this might be new to some of you, and some of you might already currently be using this. But when they ask you a question, you will either tag them on a tool, a document, Facebook post, whatever you have, to where the question is. Uh, or you can tell them where to find that answer, whether it be in the back office as well. You will not directly answer the majority of their questions, okay? Because once you start answering their questions, in their mind, they know they can ask you first, and you'll get the answer before they have to do any work. Um, and just remember, when you use this, and here's a key strategy that is really awesome. When you're using this method, once you've tagged them or told them where the post is, you're going to say to them, if anybody else ever asks you the same question, Please tag and refer them here. Do you want to know why this is so brilliant? Because when you tell somebody how to help somebody else, they are much, much, much more likely to remember that next time. Okay? You tell them once and tag them and that's it. They're most likely not going to process that. But if you tell them, hey, do you see anybody else on the Facebook page ask this question? Or if you have a Dallin ever ask this question? please redirect them here. They are going to process that, and they're going to try to remember that. So they're much more likely to use that again later. And voila, you have a light bulb. Do you guys see how you just created a duplicating system? How cool is that? Okay. If you're answering the same questions more than once, say to yourself, why haven't you created a tool to help you with this issue? Okay. Oh my gosh, think about that. How many times have you answered the same question via phone, via text mes message, via Facebook um, group page? Why haven't you created a tool to help you with this issue? Obviously, it's a question that several people ask. So create a document, create something so you don't have to keep explaining and wasting time 
you can save time and energy. So I'm going to show you a quick way of how um, I've been using this. Who has ever had a question on your Facebook group or somebody ask you, what's a drink recipe I can use? Okay, chances are 99% of you have seen this question out there. When this question gets asked, this is what commonly happens. Everybody that's on your Facebook group comments their recipes, puts them down below. So then you're relying on a ton of other experienced wine guides to provide these answers. It's very time consuming for everyone. I mean, just look at this post. Um, you know, I have 10 people that have put up their comments on here. You know, and that's time consuming and that's not duplicatable. So I'm going to show you how to take care of that problem. Here it is, again, that question being asked, I need a recipe. Where can I find this recipe? You can see because I've trained Jamie, she's obviously has asked this question to me before and I've tagged her on a post. Here she is answering the post. I, I tagged you in a post on the Northern Grapes team page with a bunch of recipes. See how simple that was? This person is now not dependent on people to be on Facebook to post up and be on their computer to be able to post up those recipes. There is now a place Jamie has directed her to go. This is how you use tag and tell. And you can see Jamie was brand new, but she knew where to find that information. And more importantly, where to tell another newbie to find that information. She no longer needs to be a pro to answer questions. Now you've created a duplicatable system everybody can use. So here's that document Jamie had tagged her on. Um, a while ago, I had put together a shared document on our team page that has all the drink recipes in it. Um, you can also do a photo album. I've done that before where you put a photo album of different drink recipes together as well. And then people can go on when they see this question, they tag others where to find it and they'll tag them on like that album or they'll go back onto here and they'll tag them on this post. Super creative. Um, you don't have to keep reconstructing the wheel. The wheel's already there. It takes two seconds and the person has instant information at their fingertips. Oh my gosh, are you guys not in love with this or what? But wait, it gets better. You can also use this technique for coaching anybody on your team. So on my team page, um, Gina, Devine, and I have constructed, um, constructed a um, shared document that has like basically everything that you would need when you're a newbie on this one document. Like if you take a peek, like um, Tanya Van Somner has actually done some um, videos on YouTube that show how to do host coaching, guest coaching, what to expect at a, you know, at a wine tasting. I've put them up on there. Um, there's a mock tasting on there. There's an aerator demonstration, um, how to follow up with a host, things like that. It's super simple. They can go on there and if somebody asks this question, you can see where people have gone in and tagged people. Hey, you're new. Here's a list of great resources, sheets for more training. Hey, um, you were asking <coughs> about the mock tasting video. Here it is, and somebody tagged them. How cool is that? There's multiple ways you can use this technique, and it will cut down on so much time for you guys. Okay, let's see. So let me go on. Okay. Now we're going to talk about identifying your middle. This is where you guys are going to really want to tune into this presentation because you might hear some stuff that you've never heard before. Um, to identify the middle, this, these are team members that most often consistently submit tastings between 500 and 1500 PV per month. Um, are interested in becoming more in the business, but they're often not sure how. Whether they're new or they've been at this for a little while, um, they're often not sure how they're being successful. Um, they often reach up to their uplines, but are hesitant to reach out to other leaders or even other teammates on their team. Um, when I have somebody that I'm in communication with that I've realized that's in this middle section, I'll often link them with an achiever as a mentor or tell them, you know what, if um, you have any questions or you need something in the middle of the day or something like you're at a tasting and need something right away and I'm not available, please reach out to this person or this person. Or sometimes I'll say, 
you know what, I think you would really connect well with this other person I have on my team. Let's start a group chat and just chit chat. I know you would just absolutely love where you guys have so much in common. And um, it's created some really good rapports on my team because um, I have team right now, teams all over the United States. I think I have 14 states covered right now. And so um, I have one girl in Georgia that's really good friends with some of the Florida girls and some of the New York State girls. And we've all never met. But it's really awesome to see that rapport that they have established through this method. Um, this group often has a lack of confidence, okay? Um, whether they're new or been doing this for a little bit, it's kind of funny. People assume that they would have confidence, but they're, they're not quite there yet. Um, they often reflect upon their actions. So when they go out and they have a tasting that isn't so well, they often reflect, like, what did I do? What can I do next time? What can I do better? Um, or they're even constantly switching up their um, presentation for their tasting. You know, they're, they're reflecting upon their actions, their goals, and things the way they can achieve. Um, they change up their routines and try things until they work. Um, they're not afraid to try things, new things, to make sure they work, which is really cool. Okay. This is the group that you will need to motivate and focus. This is your group where you can craft your future leaders. You guys have been looking for these answers. I've seen the messages and comments on the Future Gems book. Here is your answer, guys. They are right here. This middle group. Instead of waiting for that one rock star to join your team and then to change your entire team, you actually already have a ton of ready-to-bloom rock stars right here. They just need your help. And I need to teach you guys how to help them. Okay, so what the middle needs. This is the group that does not re get regular um, or consistent recognition and attention, but they're working consistently for you. And you need this group most of all. Think about how much of this group actually takes up your team volume each month, takes up your team page, takes up everything in your page. There's a huge chunk. If you run your numbers and look through and put people into this category, you're going to find a huge chunk of your, of your team is here. Okay? This is why 65% of your attention should be focused on this group. Okay? What this group needs to know is you have to let them know that they are valued. Okay? Whether they're getting constant recognition or not, you need to let them know, like, if they have a tasting, um, let them know. Send them a personal message. Say, hey, great job. I saw you sold the wine club. Awesome. You know, you can run those team reports on your team to see what badges that they've earned. And that's one way to figure out who has sold the wine club or not without them having to tell you. Um, tell them how they directly impact the team. So let them know what that bigger picture is you'd be surprised at how much they don't realize, you know, because they, they are only seeing some of the top names, and they're not associating themselves with that. And oftentimes, they're a big impact on your team. Let them know. Oh, my gosh, thank you, Sally, this month for getting paid at three-star. Did you know because you were paid at three-star, it really helps the rest of the team because blah, 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 blah. It helps me reach my goal because blah, 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 blah. Or, I see you hit three-star this month. That was your goal. Congratulations. Um, you know, how are they impacting the bigger picture of the team? Hey, Sally. Like, here's a great example. Um, Sally Egging on my team this month um, hit three-star to me last month. And I messaged her and I said, you know what, Sally? Congratulations. I've had between 200 and 250 people join my team, come and go. But you are the fifth person to ever hit three star and she was like oh my god i i never i never thought about i didn't i didn't know that that is really now i feel so much better about hitting three star she was i was so focused on everything else that wow that is a really big rec thank you for pointing that out people need to know these little tidbits that big picture okay also recognize their first time accomplishments okay um, think about this, the first time they add a team member, the first time they sell um, over $3,000 in sales, or first time they hit 25% commission, um, the first time they sell a wine club, anything that is a first-time accomplishment, you should be recognizing for them. 
Um, describe and point out their good qualities. Believe it or not, they sometimes don't know what their good qualities are. Or they don't realize that they do these things better than other people on the team. So let them know. Like, thank you, um, Rebecca, for constantly having three wine tastings a month. Or, Jamie, thanks so much for constantly contributing to the Facebook page. You know, you're adding different recipes each week. I really like that. That's great. Um, you know, thanks, um, Morgan, for posting that motivational picture you posted today. I absolutely love it, and that's what the team needs. Thanks for doing that. So um, describe what they're doing and point that out. Let them know. That's a great leader quality. That's great. You know, reinforce them for that kind of behavior. That's what we want, and it'll motivate them, and it'll keep them going. Also, listen to them. Believe it or not, listening is one of the hardest things people can do. There's a reason why we were giving one mouth in two ears, because we're supposed to listen twice as much as we talk. So listen to these people. Listen about their tasting, how it went, good or bad. Listen to about their family, you know, and, and, and what's going on in their life. Take a chance and, and, and take a second and show them you value them by listening to them. You'd be surprised how many people don't get listened to often. Um, and coach and provide guidance. Um, and I'm going to go a little bit more into this in the next um, slide. But these are the people that need your guidance the most. These are the people you should be um, devoting yourself mostly to on your team. Okay. This group often needs more guidance in some areas, but really reach out for help or voices what they need because they do not want to inconvenience you. Have you guys ever seen this before? I know this was me when I started. Like, I had an issue, but I, 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 was, I didn't want to inconvenience somebody by reaching out to them. You have to let them know that it's okay. It's okay to reach out to a team member or an upline. Um, it's okay to do that. And sometimes they are not sure of what exactly they need help with. They can often pick out what is not working, but they can't seem to point out what will work. And that's where our guidance and mentoring will come into play. Where we, chances are, have been there, done that, or have seen that, and be able to provide them with that feedback. And at this point, this is when you start to um, strengthen your relationship with this person. Give them that guidance. Give them that rapport and help them grow. Okay. Let them know that you're committed to their success and that they can reach out to you at any point. Do not, do not, do not assume that they know this. Most of the time, they do not know this. Don't assume it. So make sure you let them know you're committed and that they can reach out to you for help. Okay. How to reach the middle. Reach out to them personally, okay? I want you guys to really tune in this part of the, the presentation. Personally means text, message, or call them and do it often. You shouldn't be doing this through tagging them on a Facebook page saying, hey, good job, blah, 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 and tagging them on a post. I mean, we can do that, but that shouldn't be your main source. You want to you want to differentiate yourself and that person's accomplishments from others, and that's how you do it. Think about it right now. How many of your upline have done this or do do this to you? And if they did do this right now to you, how would that make you feel? I bet you'd feel pretty darn good. Also, you're gonna want to schedule yourself to call them regularly just to chat. Keywords just to chat. Every contact with them should not be business related. Invest in who they are by connecting and listening. How many of you guys have Bluetooth in your cars? I call my team members on my drive to or from work. Or if I'm driving around on the weekend, that's an easy time. Or I'm driving back or to a tasting, that is such an easy time to be able to call a team member just to call and say hello. You know, the easiest time. We are all driving to and from tastings at some point a month. Make it a habit, make it a routine to pick up your phone and dial one of your team members from the middle just to say hello. I promise only the first time will it feel awkward. <laughs> but after that, you'll get a rapport started and you'll see they'll start to call you. Okay. You will learn a lot about them and what motivates them and even their why just by calling and chit-chatting with them. 
you'll find out what's going on in their life, they'll tell you other things, you'll be able to learn what kind of person they are and what kind of personality they have, whether you've met them or you haven't met them. And maybe this for me is a little bit different than maybe for you because I don't organically add a lot of people to my team. I generate a lot of leads from people that I've never met before that are all over. So a lot of my team is not actually, out of everybody on my team, I only have one person that's local. The next closest teammate is three hours away. So for me, this is how I get to know my team members. I cannot do team meetups because I'm so far north in Canada, basically. There's just no way my team would come up here. So whether your team is local or whether they're not, this is a, a way, you guys, a tool you can use to connect with them. Um, establishing a rapport with your team, with, the, with them, will help create a bond with the business. You want to create a meaningful relationship with them because doing so will make it harder for them to leave the business. Have you guys ever heard this before? Um, I actually heard this at a training at Harvest one year, and it makes so much sense. Let me read that again. Establishing a rapport with them will help them create a bond with the business. You want to create a meaningful relationship with them, and doing so will make it harder for them to leave. Okay. They will want to work their business to help you and their team. Their business will no longer be about them. Can you guys relate to this personally? I can remember when Heather Kess was trying to make director. I was so focused on what I needed to do so Heather could make director. Can you guys relate to that? Like, I fell into this part where I had created that bond with Heather and created a relationship with her, and I wanted to work my business to help my upline further hers. Oh my gosh, can you imagine if we created that feeling in every single one of our downlines, how awesome life would be? We would be diamond four in no time, guys. <laughs> so try to create that. And also by regularly connecting with them, you will also find out about how their business is doing without having to ask. Oh my gosh, mind blown, right? Okay, who is sick of these texts? Who has received one of these texts? And, oh my gosh, if you are sending any of these texts that I'm about to list, please stop. Red flag yourself tonight. Go drink a glass of wine and reroute everything that you've done. Okay, who is sick of these texts? What are your numbers for this month? It doesn't have to be text. I guess these can be fake Facebook messages, too. How are you doing on tastings? Um, are you getting paid at your title this month? If you are asking these questions, then you do not have a strong rapport with your team or team members. These kind of questions can actually hurt your team more than help. Okay? Red flag, guys. If you go back to that part where you're calling them on your way to a tasting, you're having that com that conversation and you're texting them daily just back and forth for a conversation, these things will naturally come up in a conversation. You will never have to ask this. They will tell you these things. So if you're doing this, stop. Stop right now. Our goal is to always be duplicating and motivating our team. These questions can hurt our team. Okay. More, more motivating strategies. Um, text or PM them on accomplishments that are meaningful. I think we talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, call them on big accomplishments and, and milestones. Ready? Call them. Pick up that phone and call them. That'll be something. You, I mean, think about it. When we promote and Rick calls us, how awesome is that? We get so excited and so motivated by that. You need to create that same feeling as well. Call them on their accomplishments and their milestones. Um, point out and praise when you see them using, um, engage, engaging in behavior that is leader-like, um, like cheering on teammates, answering teammates' questions, or posting a tip, or etc. You need to encourage them to keep doing that. 
Don't assume that they're just motivating themselves. Encourage them. Let them know that's okay and that you really like that. that. And that's what leaders do. People love to hear that. Oh, my God, thank you so much. That's what leaders do. I'm so glad to see you being a leader. So glad to see you stepping up. Or whatever terms you want to use, make sure you point out and praise that behavior you want to see to reinforce it so you'll see it again. This builds confidence, which in return builds independent leaders, which then moves that person from the middle to the achieving class. Do you guys see how that just worked? You found that person in the middle. You provided them guidance, mentoring. You've coached them. You've enlightened them. And they're duplicating themselves in their team. You have now moved them into that achiever category. And you're gonna, they're going to be independent. And you're going to be able to move on to somebody else and keep going. And that's how you're going to continuously being able to build leaders on your team and keep your team moving and growing at all times. When coaching and motivating is done right, your reach can be endless, which is really, really awesome to see. Okay. But you need to make all of this your routine and make this group your focus. Okay. I hope I've motivated you guys tonight. I hope you want to go out and do this. But you need to make an effort to keep doing this, okay? Consistency will pay off for you in this way. Okay. And I'm going to leave you guys with one more last piece. Um, just remember, true leaders don't create followers. They create more leaders. And I hope you guys understand the meaning of that. I hope you guys walked away with some kind of tidbit here today that really helps you guys out. Um, if anybody has any questions, um, we can definitely open up the lines for questions, whether you want to raise your hand or whatever. But I, I really hope this has helped you guys. Um, it's definitely a new and fresh um, outlook on how to coach your team. And I really hope it truly helps you guys. And you, you take this and embrace this and use it because... It's really a seriously awesome strategy to be using. So, um, do you guys have any questions? I don't see any hands raised. Okay.